The new M1 MacBooks have just dropped and I have both models and I'm gonna be testing out how Chrome and the Microsoft Office suite handles and see if eight gigabytes is enough. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. But today I'm gonna to find out if the Microsoft Office suite, which hasn't been updated for the new M1 Max, handle on these new M1 Max and while using Chrome, which is a typical workload for a normal student or casual user. I will be doing Zoom tests and other performance tests. So hit that like button if you wanna see more videos like that as I I have a lot of content on these new M1 Max. So right here, I've got the MacBook Air, and this is the base model with the eight gigabytes of RAM. And I thought I'd test it on this one, as firstly, this doesn't have the fan or the eight core GPU, and it's only got eight gigabytes of RAM. But what I want you to do is, is look at this activity monitor, and we're gonna have a look at the RAM usage and CPU usage. And I've got Google Chrome open, as well as the Microsoft Office suite. And I've got all of them open. So I've got Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Notes. So these are sort of the typical things that people are going to be doing. Probably not having 15 tabs open, but I really wanted to push what potentially students might be doing or the everyday person might be doing. And just a little spoiler, if uh, th these apps handle absolutely fine with eight gigabytes of RAM, no issues. I've been doing this test over and over. I've literally been sat here for, I don't even know, 20, 20 minutes, probably a good 20 minutes, and I've seen no issues with this. So flicking through, having a you know little tight, you know, just really trying to push this uh, memory and CPU usage. And as you can see, we're not really touching the surface with this. So I've sort of been um, copying all of these as well. So trying out making graphs and stuff like that. We've got PowerPoints. This is an old uni PowerPoint as well. And it's got a good few pages and the performance is fantastic. So we've got PowerPoint, we've got Excel. Let's go back into Microsoft Word. Let's see what the scrolling is like. Yeah, no problems whatsoever. Again, let me just use that, it's a bit easier. But as you can see, no issues whatsoever. You can see Google, uh, the activity monitor, and CPU usage is absolutely fine. We're sat around six and a half gigs of the eight gigs and a couple of gigs of swaps. But again, you know, I've got music playing in the background. So I got MagSafe playing just over here, which is a fantastic song. I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's play this video in the background and let's play this video as well. And let's have a look and see how the RAM usage, so it's creeped up a little bit, but again, nothing too bad. I'm switching and again, we've got it in the 4K resolution. So no issues just over here. Let's have a look at CPU usage. So it's spiked up just a little bit, but again, well below the threshold. So no issues with anything that we're seeing right now. And again, I've got 15 tabs open. So we'll have a little play with Twitter. And again, if you just have a look, oh, I love this picture. Um, and yeah, if we just have a look and see what the CPU usage is like, yeah, I really, I really can't see anything wrong with it. I, I, it's just not peaking whatsoever. And this is me with the activity monitor. So obviously, they, I don't know if you know, but activity monitor does use a little bit more CPU as well as RAM. So if you didn't have this open, potentially you'll see much better performance, even what we're seeing now. It doesn't get hot whatsoever when I've been doing these tests. I've been doing this for a good, like I said, 15, 20 minutes and no issues. And I'll just flick through just so you can see what it's like. And again, memory usage, absolutely fine. As you can see, I'm barely really touching the surface when even using Google Chrome. So there you go. So it's spiked up, as you can see, seeing using YouTube which is probably the only stress to this system here. Yeah, unless if you've got about 
four videos playing and music playing while you're trying to get your work done, you're gonna be more than fine with eight gigabytes of RAM, the M1 MacBook as well. So for a student, $899 or for the rest of us, $999, you're gonna be more than fine with this if this is your typical workflow. So just looking through websites and, and scrolling and everything like that and doing a little bit of work with Microsoft Office. If you're gonna be doing things with pages and numbers and everything like that, that's, that's Apple's version of Microsoft Suite. Essentially, you're gonna see even better performance because uh, the keynote and, and numbers and pages that Apple supply are obviously made for the M1 chip, whereas this is not optimized for the M1 chip. So we're seeing, well, we're gonna be seeing less performance on this, but on a chip like this, it really doesn't scratch its surface. So again, 95 Mac, I like this page as well. Let's go back to Twitter. But like I said, you're gonna be absolutely fine. I hope that this has shown you the type of performance that you're you could expect if you're doing workloads like this. And I never really saw the CPU usage, only until I started playing about multiple videos on YouTube uh, did I see the CPU usage go to about 60, 70%, but there's loads of headroom, honestly. And normal people aren't gonna be having this many tabs open with YouTube and everything like that, but it was the only way I could get something like this to spike. If you're just running a video and, and let's say some music in the background, running all three of these apps, if you're constantly switching between the two, again, you're you're gonna be absolutely fine with this model. I wouldn't recommend going for the, for the Pro just because it is gonna be pointless for the type of workloads that you, you've done. And I've also done tests with Final Cut as well. There will be a DaVinci video coming out soon as well, but in Final Cut Pro, this model, absolutely fine as well. The export times are almost identical and yeah, thermals. I've. I let's let's touch it and see how it how it is. Honestly, it's pretty cool to the touch. So it's not even hot. So yeah, no fan, no issues. <laughs> So let's jump back into the video. As you can see, the base MacBook Air would be perfect as no matter what I did, the MacBook just didn't show any slowdown. And I've been using this to write up a lot of my videos as well as do other tasks. And normally it takes me hours and it never got hot. I genuinely think that if you're gonna be using your MacBook in this type of manner with Microsoft Office and Chrome in the background, which can be tough on a Mac, especially on that Intel MacBook Air, which if you don't know used to get so hot. I think that this base model is gonna be more than enough for you. And the fact that you can get this for $9.99 or $8.99 if you're a student, you just can't go wrong. And if you need a little bit more storage, you can go for the Apple upgraded storage, but I would recommend grabbing yourself an external SSD as you'll get more storage for your money and it'll be more than fast enough for your needs. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you wanna get some. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion, so please leave a comment down below on your thoughts and also check check out the links in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarMoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. If you wanna see more from me right now though, you know what to do, click on one of these two videos. I made them myself, I think they're all right. So go ahead and watch. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.